So, Lord Balaram is not different from Lord Krishna, as Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, also Lord Balaram is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Only difference, of course, is in their color. Krishna being dark color like the monsoon cloud and Balaram being white. But Lord Balaram, uh, he comes as the servant of Lord Krishna. Lord Balaram is the original spiritual master. And as the original spiritual master, he's teaching how to serve Krishna, how to give service to Lord Krishna. It's actually said Lord Balaram serves Krishna in assuming 10 different forms. Lord Balaram expands himself as Ananta, as Sankarshan, and Sankarshan is non different from Ananta Shesha. And so in that form, at Sankarshan, he assumes 10 different forms for the service of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna's shoes, Lord Krishna's asana, Lord Krishna's bed, Lord Krishna's uh, umbrella, Lord Krishna's crown, Lord Krishna's jewelry, Lord Krishna's garland, Lord Krishna's Brahman thread. And these are all different forms of Lord Balaram. Lord Balaram takes these different forms just for the service of Lord Krishna. And Lord Balaram enjoys serving Krishna 
in all the different rasas as well. He comes as a brother of Krishna. Of course, we know Lord Balaram appeared. It appears like he's the son of Rohini. Rohini was one of the wives of Vasudev. Vasudev had several wives. Devaki, Rohini being the main one, the most known of Vasudev's wives. So Lord Balaram initially, Lord Balaram initially appears in the womb of Devaki. He appears in the womb of Devaki and Vasudev. But under the influence of Yoga Maya, he is transferred to the womb of Rohini. Now, we should understand about the appearance of Lord Balaram. First of all, before Lord Balaram appears there, there are six children of Vasudeva and Devaki who are killed one after another by the evil King Kamsa. These six children who appeared in the womb of Devaki, they were originally, <clears throat> they were originally the sons of Marichi, Marichi being one of the sons of Brahma. And as the sons of Marichi, they were cursed by a Brahmana. They were cursed to take birth in the family of Haranyakashipu. They had done something demoniac. I think it was because they were laughing at Lord Brahma, because Lord Brahma was lusty after his own daughter. So that was an offense on their part because Lord Brahma was much superior to them. So it was not proper for them to uh, ridicule Lord Brahma. And the result of that, they were cursed to take birth in the family of Hranyakashipu. So these six sons of Marichi became the grandsons of Haranyakashipu. But as the grandsons of Haranyakashipu, they began to worship Lord Brahma. They were worshiping Lord Brahma to get protection that they would not be killed by any demigods. But when Haranyakashipu found out about this, he was very angry. He said, he said, independently, you're going to worship Lord Brahma. You're not going through me. You're not respecting my authority. So Harani Kashipu, in his anger at these six grandchildren, he cursed them. He said, I, you will take birth in the womb of Devaki and you will be killed by your father. Because what happened was, Haranya, there was one, the, the father of the six sons in the family of Haranyakashipu was Ka, Kalanemi. So Kalanemi took birth as Kamsa. Kalanemi was a demon who was killed by Lord Vishnu, and he took his next birth as King Kamsa. And then as King Kamsa, he came and he killed the six children of Devaki. The six children of Devaki, they'd originally been the sons. They were the sons of Kalanimi. So previously he'd been their father. And then next life, he became Kamsa and he's killing his own sons. This is how karma works, you see? So in one life, they were father and son. 
they loved each other, the father and son, father loves his son, but next life he killed them. As Kamsa, he came and killed the six. We should also understand that how is it possible that these six sons, these six children of Marich could be killed or could enter into the womb of Devaki? Because Mother Devaki is a very pure devotee. She's a liber she's a Nitya Siddha. And she and Vasudev, they're the mother and father of Lord Krishna. So how is it possible that these six children who are not liberated, so how they could enter into the womb of Devaki? So it's explained that just like at the time of devastation, when there's the end of the universe, then all the living entities, they enter into the body of Mahavishnu. Now the body of Mahavishnu is spiritual, but all of us conditioned souls, we all enter into the body of Mahavishnu at the end of the creation. We enter into the body of Mahavishnu. So we enter into the body of Mahavishnu, but we don't actually touch the body of Mahavishnu. We just simply enter in there for some time. And then when the creation begins again, then come out. So in the same way, these six sons of Marichi, they entered into the womb of Devaki. They were there for some time. Then they were killed by Kamsa. And then after they killed by Kamsa, then there's another pastime that uh, after Krishna kills Kamsa and frees Vasudev and Devaki, then Devaki requests Krishna that she said, I heard because after, after Krishna had killed Kamsa, then Krishna and Balaram were sent to Sandipani Muni's ashram. And when they were in Sandipani Muni's ashram, then they brought back Sandipani Muni's son. As Guru Dakshin, Sandipani Muni requested Krishna and Balaram bring back my dead son. As Guru Dakshin, that will be good Guru Dakshin for me because my son died at the ocean. So bring him back to life. So Krishna and Balaram went and brought him back to life. They brought him back from Yamaraj. So when Vasudev and Devaki heard about this, Devaki particularly, being a woman, she, she, she said to Lord Krishna that, you know, you saved Sandipani Muni's son, you brought him back to life. Can you bring back your older brothers? Because Kamsa killed your six older brothers. So please bring them back to life. So Lord Krishna, hearing the request of his mother, Lord Krishna arranged and he went and he brought the six sons of Devaki. He brought them all back to Devaki. And Devaki, she had fed some breast milk to Lord Krishna, being overwhelmed by motherly affection. Although Krishna was already grown up, quite a bit, Devaki fed breast milk to him. So when the six sons came, her six children came, she also breastfed all of them. So they all got Krishna Pasada because Krishna had taken the breast milk of Devaki. So whatever was left in her breast, that was Prasada. And so the six children, they also drank the breast milk from Devaki. And by drinking Krishna's prasada, they all got liberated and they went to the heavenly planets. Anyway, the six sons who were initially killed by Devaki, they 
enter into the womb of Devaki, they don't actually touch the womb because Devaki's womb is completely pure and spiritual. However, the seventh child, the seventh child is Lord Balaram. And Lord Balaram entered into the womb of Devaki. And why is he coming as the older brother? Because in the previous incarnation, you had Lord Rama as the older brother and Lakshman as the younger brother. Lakshman and Bharat and Shatrugna, they're all younger. It's Lord Rama who's the oldest. But in Krishna Lila, Balaram comes as the older brother. There's a reason for that. And the reason is that in Rama Lila, Lakshman suffered so much. It was so difficult for him to try to please Lord Rama. Lord Rama would not let him make any nice arrangements for his comfort and for his well being. Lord Rama would always tell to Lakshman, no, 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 too opulent, no, keep it simple. And so it was very distressing for Lakshman to have to go through all of this. So he vowed that in the future incarnation, I will not come as a younger brother, I'll come as an older brother. Right? Maybe, maybe, you're, maybe you're the younger brother, or maybe you have younger brothers. So you know what it's like, right? The older brother. You know, <laughs> he likes to be the boss, he likes to say, do this, listen to me, I'm older, you listen to me, like that. So Lord Balaram comes as the older brother, not the younger brother. And Lord Balaram comes in the mood of a servant. He's always a servant, just as Lord Nityananda in Chaitanya Lila, Lord Balaram comes as Lord Nityananda, and Lord Nityananda's mood is always to serve Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So in the same, Lord Balaram, he was always in the mood of serving Lord Krishna. And even before Lord Krishna appears, Lord Balaram comes into the womb of Devaki, and he makes arrangement for Lord Krishna to come there because he knows that in the future, Lord Krishna is going to appear there. How did he know? Well, there was a prophecy, right? At the wedding of Vasudev and Devaki, at that time, there was a prophecy, an omen, a voice from the sky spoke out, Oh, Kamsa, you're such a fool. You don't know the eighth child of this couple is going to kill you. So Kamsa immediately wanted to kill Devaki. And it was only by the pleas and the political maneuvering of Vasudev that Kamsa was a little pacified. And Vasudev convinced Kamsa of his integrity. He convinced Kamsa, he told him, that he said, whenever we have a child, I will deliver the child to you and you can do as you please. But don't kill my wife. Don't kill Devaki because she's your sister and she's just married. If you kill her, it will give you a very bad name. But whenever she gives birth to children, I will give them to you. So Kamsa accepted these words of Vasudev and he agreed to this proposal. And so it happened that Devaki gave birth and one after another, Kamsa was killing them. And then the seventh child came, Lord Balaram comes in the womb. He's come in the womb because he wants to make arrangement for Lord Krishna's appearance. Just like if the king is going to come before the, you know, if somebody, if, what is it? If Modi is going to come, Prime Minister Modi is going to come and visit the temple. You're going to clean the temple. You have everything arranged, everything very nice, neat and speak and span. You want to create the good impression. 
And so the same way, Lord Krishna is going to enter into the womb of Devaki, Lord Balaram makes all arrangements for Lord Krishna to come there. He puts a bed there. He makes a bed. Anantashesha is the bed of the Lord. So Lord Balaram arranges for Anantashesha to be there as a bed for Lord Krishna when he comes into the womb of Devaki. The birth of Lord Krishna, not like our birth. You read in the Srimad Bhagavatam about the child in the womb and how they're packed up and suffer, suffering and bent over in all kinds of difficult positions. But Lord Krishna's birth is not like that. Lord Krishna, it's the Supreme Lord, and he enters into the womb of Devaki. But first of all, Lord Balaram comes here. And Lord Balaram enters into that womb of Devaki, and he stays there for three months. After three months, it was arranged Yoga Maya would transfer. Balaram to the womb of Rohini. And Rohini, she was one of the wives of Vasudev, but she was not in the prison house of Kamsa. Vasudev, we said he had several wives. So he, other wives, they were sent different places for their safety. So they would not be persecuted or harmed. So Rohini was sent to the home of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. And she it was there in the home of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda. On this day, on the Purnima day, 5,000 years ago, Rohini gave birth. She delivered Lord Balaram. And eight days later, Mother Yashoda is going to give birth. And Mother Yashoda will give birth to Lord Krishna and Lord Krishna's sister also. So that all happened in Goku. For their safety, Rohini and her child are over there in the home of Nanda Maharaj. So it's very convenient. There's a, a very nice, warm relationship between Rohini and Mother Yashoda, and they both have their children, and the two children grow up together and enjoy their pastimes, their childhood pastimes with each other. So Lord Balaram appears as the seventh child, but he's transferred to the womb of Rohini. So people thought Devaki had had a miscarriage. They thought it was a miscarriage. Oh, seventh child is a miscarriage. But then again, another child is in her womb. The eighth child comes. And of course, this is the one which Kamsa is particularly concerned about. Although he killed all the earlier children, he knew it was to be the eighth child who was supposed to kill him. So he was particularly anxious about the eighth child appearing in the womb of Devaki. And indeed he saw, when he saw Devaki in the prison house, he saw how effulgent she looked. She, he could understand that the personality of Godhead must be in her womb. And of course, but still comes as such a demon, he's thinking, maybe I should kill her now before she gives birth. Anyway, it was arranged. He did not kill her. He was waiting for her to deliver the child. And then he wants to kill the child. So, uh, Lord Balaram comes in the mood of service. We heard he came first into the womb 
to make all arrangements for the birth of Krishna. Uh, then, after taking birth, after taking birth from the womb of, after leaving the womb of Devaki and being transferred to the womb of Rohini, Balaram has to remain in that womb a total of about 14 months before Lord Balaram takes birth. So a, a long pregnancy. Just like Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when Sachi Mata delivered Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Lord Chaitanya had been in the womb for 14 months. And they were wondering, why is it taking so long for the child to take birth? But then Sachi Mata's father, Nilambar Chakravarti, he was a great astrologer. And when he looked at his chart of all the different planets, he saw that there's a very auspicious period coming. And he understood the child is waiting for the auspicious period before he takes birth. And of course, Lord Chaitanya, he took birth on the Gorpurnima, the Holi, the festival of Holi, on the Purnima time, when there was an eclipse. At that time also there was the eclipse. So because, because it was the eclipse, everybody was engaged in chanting the holy name. All the Hindus were chanting the holy name. And all the Islamic people, they were also imitating the Hindus. They were mimicking the Hindus. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Yeah, I like. Yeah. So everybody was chanting the holy name. So that was very auspicious. And it was at that time Lord Chaitanya made his appearance. So similarly, Lord Balaram, he is coming. He's going to make his appearance, and it's on the Purnima the full moon day, and Lord Balaram's coming along with his brother, Lord Krishna. Krishna comes for his pastimes. One of the opulences of Lord Krishna is that he comes along with his devotees. Wherever the Lord appears, all of his different devotees also come with him. So we see Lord Krishna appearing, and already, of course, Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda are there, and Vasudev and Devaki are there, and Lord Balaram has also come. He's also come there. They're all coming for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. They want to give service to Krishna. So, Lord Balaram, uh, after the children were born, then Vasudev, who is actually the father, he knew that uh, because when, when Lord Krishna was born, he had brought his child from the prison house over to the home of Nanda Maharaj and taken the baby girl who Mother Yashoda had delivered. He took the baby girl away. So Vasudev knew that his son was actually in the home of Nanda Maharaj. And he also knows Rohini is also there. And he knows that Rohini also has a son. So he wants to have a name giving ceremony. So he requested Gargamuni to go there and do the name giving ceremony. But he, he arranged it should be done in a quiet manner. It wasn't to be done in a big show to let everybody know child is born and we're having the name giving ceremony. And the reason was because Kamsa had got warning that this child who's going to kill you is already born someplace, some other place. So then Kamsa orders, kill all the children in Braja, 
and he sends his friends around to go and kill all the young children in Braja. Just imagine such a demon eh, that he could do such atrocity. So because there was a danger for the children being killed, that if people knew, oh, there's children there, Kamsa's people will come and they'll try to kill the children. So they made a very quiet ceremony for the name giving of name giving ceremony, Nama, Nama Samskar for the Krishna and Balaram. So at that time, Gargamuni gave the names and he gave three names for Lord Balaram. He gave the name Rama and he gave the name Balabhadra and the other name was Sankarshan. So Sankarshan, because Gargamuni, he could understand this child was actually from the womb of Devaki by his power and by astrological means. And so he could understand that this child who was born to Rohini was actually the child of Devaki. He had been already in the womb of Devaki and it was Vasudev's child. So Vasudev himself, he couldn't go there for the ceremony, but Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, Gargacharya. So he gives these three names for Lord Balaram. Sankarshana, because he's come from another family. And then Rama, he will be the source of pleasure to everyone. And Balabhadra, Bala meaning very strong, Balarama, not strong as we would think of strong, you know, with big biceps and like that. No. Uh, in the beginning, when the devotees were drawing pictures, when the artists were drawing pictures, at one point they made Krishna with big muscles on his arms. You know. And Prabhupada said, no, 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 he said, you can't, this is not, but they said, but Prabhupada, he picks up the Govardhan hill. <laughs> but Prabhupada said, no, he, Krishna doesn't need muscles to pick up the Govardhan hill. You know, you want to go to the gym, you want to lift up weights, you build the muscles, but Krishna doesn't need muscles to build up, to pick up things. And so, Balaram is strong, but not strong in that sense. He has his spiritual body. His body is soft. And Balarama, of course, we know Balarama also by other names. For example, one of the names which we know Lord Balarama is Paladara. Because as Lord Balarama grew up, he would carry the plow. And Lord Krishna he would be Venudara. He would carry the flute. Krishna would play his flute and Lord Balarama would carry the plow. And Prabhupada said, you see, Krishna and Balarama, they appear in the Vaishya family. They appear in the family of Nanda Maharaj. And as children, they spent their time in the, with the cowherd people taking care of the cows. Krishi goraksha vaninam vaishya karma svabhavajam. The vaishyas, they have the duty to take care of the cows and protect the cows. And they also do farming and trading. This is the dharma of the vaishya. So Krishna and Balaram, they appear in the family of Nanda Maharaj. And Lord Krishna is playing the flute to call the cows. When he goes in the fields in the forests of Vrindavan, he'll blow his flute, plays flute, and in this way, all the cows will come. They'll all respond when they hear the sound of Krishna's flute. And Lord Balaram, he's carrying the plow because with the plow, He's going to till the fields. 
He's going to plow the fields and to plant the crops, to grow wheat and different grains which we grow, produce in the field. You plow the field first. So Lord Balaram, he carries the plow. Of course, Lord Balaram, he uses the plow in very special ways, not just only farming, but he uses it to do other things. Just like there's a couple of pastimes, one pastime which is glorified in the Jayadeva Goswami's Das Avatar Stotra. You know, the Jayadeva Goswami wrote the Gita Govinda. So the very beginning of the Gita Govinda is the Das Avatar Stotra. And in the Das Avatar Stotra, he glorifies 10 avatars of Lord Krishna. Mm. Notice he doesn't glorify Lord Krishna. There's no verse about Krishna because Krishna is not avatar. Krishna is the source of all the avatars. All of the avatars come from him. So Keshavadrita, Narahari Rupa, Keshavadrita, Haladara Rupa, Keshavadrita, Kurma Sharir. Uh, it's all Keshava. Who is that Keshava? That is Lord Krishna. He is, the, he is the source of all the avatars. So Jayadeva Goswami, his verse glorifies Lord Balarama. I remember in Hong Kong, on the temple door, in our temple in Hong Kong, we have the 10 avatars. But when they did it first, when we first did it, we put Krishna there. <laughs> but then Tamal Krishna Goswami pointed out, he said, he said, well, this should be Balarama, not Krishna. Because in the Das Avatar Stotra, it's Lord Balaram who's glorified. Lord Balaram, Haladara Rupa, Jai Jagad Keshavadrita, Haladara Rupa, Jai Jagadish Hare, Jai Jagadish Hare, Jai Jagadish Hare. So Lord Balarama's glorified by Jayadeva Goswami for his pastime with the plow. And what, he, what did he do with the plow? Well, <laughs> Lord Balaram, he likes Varuni. When they cook, those who are in the kitchen cooking today for Lord Balarama, especially the Rajbog, you have to offer some Varuni beverage. You know what Varuni is? Varuni means it's honey, a special honey, which Lord Balaram is very fond of. Lord, Bala Lord Balaram has, has two wives also. That's a whole nother. Two, one wife is Varuni and one wife is Rivati. We will tell you about the two wives later. But first we're talking about the, uh, this Varuni, this honey. Lord Balaram, he likes very much to drink the honey. And you often, you, you know, when, if you take too many sweets, you know, you can get intoxicated. You know, sometimes new devotees, we feed them gulab jamins, you know. And if you eat like, 10, 20, 30 gulab jamins, you know, oh, you know, you, you really get intoxicated, you know, with the syrup, that sugar syrup, it, it's quite intoxicating. So Lord Balaram, he was drinking the Varuni beverage at one point, and he was quite intoxicated with the Varuni. And he told the Yamuna, he, in, in, he was in intoxicated state. So he said to Yamuna River, Yamuna, you come here. I want to bathe in your water. He ordered the Yamuna to come so that he could enter into our water. He didn't want to go to the Yamuna. He told the Yamuna, you come here. This was, you know, we do these kind of things when you get intoxicated, right? 
if you get intoxicated, do stupid things, silly things. Anyway, Lord Balaram, it was not silly, but nothing happened. The, Yamun, the, the river didn't come closer. So Lord Balarama became a little angry. He said, oh, you don't want to listen to my words, eh? I will teach you a lesson. And Lord Balaram took his plow. He said, I'm going to break you into little streams. And Lord Balaram took his plow and he began to dig the ground. And the Yamuna was going to break into little streams. And just at that point, then the Kalindi Devi appeared from the Yamuna River. And Kalindi Devi came and fell at the feet of Lord Balaram. And she apologized to Lord Balaram that, oh, my dear Lord, I'm very sorry. Please forgive me. I did not appreciate your glories. Please forgive me for not being uh, obedient to your instructions. And so Kalindi came and offered prayers to Lord Balaram, begged forgiveness. So it said, whenever in the rainy season, like this time of the year, it appears like Lord Balaram has broken the Yamuna because it, so many different streams appear on the side of the Yamuna. And they're reminded of that pastime when Lord Balarama was threatening to break the Yamuna into little streams. So that was one pastime with Lord Balaram's plow. Of course, there's another pastime also with Lord Balaram's plow, and that is with uh, Samba, at the marriage of Samba, Lord Krishna's son, Samba. Samba means Samba, it's one who is always with his mother. Right? When the child is naughty, then the mother has to take more care of him. She has to keep the child with him all the time. So Samba was a bit like that. He was a bit of a mischievous child. And it was Samba who they dressed him up as a woman when they were at Prabhakshetra. They dressed him up as a woman. They put him in a sari and they took a big spherical metal ball and stuck it under his cloth. And then they brought him before the sages and they asked the great sages, they said, oh, great sages, is this woman going to give birth to a boy or a girl? And the sages then put the curse that this, this lady will give birth to what will destroy the whole Yadu dynasty. The whole Yadu dynasty is going to be destroyed by this, the birth from this woman. So that was the destruction. That was the fratricidal war where the Yadus annihilated each other. They all left. It was, of course, all the arrangement of Lord Krishna for them to leave the world. Anyway, Samba was the one who dressed up like a woman. You know? So Samba is a bit of a a bit of a, a lad, you know, mischievous boy. So he's got that name, Samba, one who's with his mother. Anyway, he wanted to get married, and he decided he liked this one girl, Lakshmana, who was the daughter of Duryodhan. The only problem was she didn't like him. <laughs> However, in Vedic culture, that's not a big problem if you're, if you're a Maharati. <laughs> so Lakshmana, the daughter of Duryodhan, was, having, was to have a Swayambara ceremony. Apparently, she was, a very, um, she was very much in demand. There were many men after her. They all thought she would make a very nice wife. And so they arranged a Swayamvara ceremony. And all the princes and different people who thought they would make a good husband for her, they all came to see if she would pick them to be her husband. 
So Lakshmana comes out and she's looking at the different princes and kings and so on who are all there, who want to marry her. And Samba is there and Samba sees her and Samba just picks her up and takes her and puts her on his chariot and goes off. So it was outrageous. Everyone was angry and Duryodhan was also angry and the other heads of the, the uh, Kuru dynasty, they were all upset that, why? how he could do like this? This is not proper. We have to teach him a lesson. So they all went after him. There was, I think, six or seven of them, great Maharatis. They all went after Samba. And he had a big fight. And Samba is also a great fighter because he's born from Lord Krishna. He's, what? he's the son from Jambavati. So Jambavan was a great fighter, his father. Uh, well, his, his grandfather, right? Jambavati is the, the daughter and Jambavan, the grandfather. He had fought for Lord Rama and he also fought with Lord Krishna for many days. He had fought a good fight with Lord Krishna. And so Samba also knew how to fight and he had a good fight with them. But there were seven of them. <laughs> So it was too much for him. The odds were not in his favor. And they overcame Samba and arrested him. They didn't kill him, but they took him prisoner and took him back. And they brought back the girl also. Of course, nobody else can marry her now because she's already been touched by Samba. And so she can't get married to anybody else. But still, they were not in favor. Uh, initially, initially, they were not in favor. But when they saw how Samba was fighting, they thought, oh, it's a good fighter. He knows how to fight. He could fight. He was keeping seven of them at bay. So he was, he was giving them a good battle. But finally, they overcame him and took him prisoner. And so they took him away. And then Narada Muni, he heard about it and he went to Dwarka and informed Lord Krishna. He informed Lord Krishna, he informed the Yadu dynasty because Samba is from the Yadu dynasty. And he, he tells him, the Koro, the Korovas have arrested Samba. And they, they fought against him, unfair odds, seven against one. And so then, when the Yadu dynasty heard, then Maharaj Ugarasena said, call the army, call the army, we all have to go, we'll go and fight the Yadu dynasty. Well, uh, well, no, they're the Yadus. The, the Yadus were going to fight the Kauravas. So usually they're friends, the Kauravas and the Yadus, they're friends. But uh, when they heard that Samba had been arrested in this manner, then they were ready to go to war with them. But Lord Balaram was there, and it was Lord Balaram who intervenes. And Lord Balaram says, no, no, why we should have war? If there's war, then there will be so much killing. It's not good. Better we avoid the war. He said, give me a chance. He said, let me go there, and I will speak to them, and I will settle it. I will arrange everything. Let me go and speak to them. Because Lord Balaram had a very close relationship, particularly with Duryodhan, because the Lord Balaram had spent time there with Duryodhan, and he didn't, he's like the Duryodhan's guru, at least in fighting with the club. Lord Balaram is able, two things, he's good with the plow, and he's good with the club. So he had taught Duryodhan how to fight with the club. So he had a very close friendship with them. So Lord Balaram thought, let me go there. I will go and speak to them and arrange, settle the, the business and get, bring Samba back. So Lord Balaram, it was agreed, all right, give Balaram a chance, let him try, see if he can settle everything peacefully. And so he went there, he took, he took, uh,
He took Uddhava with him and he took other senior Brahmanas from Dwarka. They all went together, a party, and they went to Hastinapur. And they didn't enter the city, but they camped outside. And then they sent word in, go and tell the heads of the Kuru dynasty that we're here. So when they heard that Lord Balaram had come, they're very excited. Oh, Lord Balaram, Lord Balaram, he's our friend. And they're very happy and they gave a nice reception and they brought offerings and everything. They're very happy to see Lord Balaram. They thought this is very good. And they came out to see Lord Balaram and Lord Balaram is nicely received. And then Lord Balaram tells him why he's come. And he said that, I heard that you've arrested, you have Samba, the son of Lord Krishna in your prison. And I want you to release him along with his wife. You should release them and I will take them with me to Dwarka. So when Lord Balaram told them like this, then Duryodhan and the other Kauravas they, they were not pleased. They said, oh, listen to this person. He is like, he is like the shoes, but his thinking is like the head. He's like the crown on our head. He's telling us what to do. Who is he? He said, they're coming from the, the Yadu dynasty. The Yadavas, they don't even have a kingdom. You know, the Yadavas, it, it said during the time of Kamsa's persecution, the, the Yadus, they didn't, they gave up their kingdom. They, they were just moving here and there, different places. And it was Lord Krishna, finally, who moved everybody to Dwarka. But they didn't even have like a kingdom. He said, and now they're coming to us, Kauravas, and he's telling us what to do. Said, what impertinence they come and who is this and that when he's talking and balarama told them in the name of lord krishna i have come to request you. and he's asking us in the name of lord krishna and who is that krishna he's just some cowherd boy he's just some cowherd boy and he's telling us we are the great kshatriyas and he's ordering ordering us what to do like so they were they were speaking like very insulting way about Lord Krishna and about the Yadu dynasty. So when ba Lord Balaram heard all this, he said, Oh, like that, is it? Ah. He said, I can see we'll have to teach you a different way. To give instructions is not enough for you. Just like when we deal with an animal, it's not enough to just give them instruction. You have to use a stick. So Lord Balaram said, today I will teach you a lesson. I will use a stick for you people. So Lord Balaram took his plow and with his plow, he began to hit the ground and he was dragging and the whole of the Hastinapur palace, it began to move towards the Yamuna. And the, Yad, the, the Kauravas were there and the, it was like an earthquake was hitting Hastinapur. It was like the whole building, the whole buildings moving towards the Yamuna. Everything is shaking. And the, the, the Kauravas, they just, they, ah, you know, they just didn't know what to do and they just understood. Oh, Lord Balaram, Lord Balaram, please, please. And they just fell at Lord Balaram's feet and they apologized and they begged Lord Balaram, no, no, we are only joking. We just wanted to see some of your power. <laughs> we just wanted to understand more about your powers. But don't worry, here, here is Samba and here is his wife. And here's a dowry and they bought a huge dowry. And in this way, Lord Balaram took everything back to Dwarka and told Lord Krishna what happened. And so this is Lord Balaram, how he has such a nice mood to serve Lord Krishna.
So we have to learn from Lord Balaram how to be the servant. You see? That even the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself, he comes as a servant. Okay? So we will stop now. Any question? We will, we will speak more as times in the evening. There's so many. Thanks, Maharaj. Uh, uh, wonderful description of the past times and Balram's glorification. Wonderful. And then, uh, as far as Balram is concerned, can we uh, decorate him with a peacock uh, feather? Or is a separate? Uh, well, you, you can do. It's, you know, usually it's Lord Krishna having the peacock feather. Peacock feathers because they're, they're in abundance in Vrindavan. There's so many peacocks there. So Lord, Bala, Lord Krishna, he likes to decorate himself with everything from nature. The, the, fed, the garlands, all forest flowers, and the peacock, the fed, and the, 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 the different stones, the color from the stones, he uses that for his body also. So can we put peacock feathers on Lord Balaram? Well, I don't know. I've never heard that you couldn't. I don't know. Is it usually that anybody know? Because in some uh, pictures and all that, in Vrindavan especially, they use the white, uh, the white uh, feathers. White so, feathers. Yeah, I don't know whether it's uh, from the white peacock or it's a different uh, bird. Not sure. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> white feather. White. white. That's not peacock feather. White feather. That's not peacock. But the peacock feather. Mm. I don't know about putting them on Balaram. Maybe you could. I don't know. So I'll have to inquire about that. some the pujaris. They know these things. People who are dressing the deities every day. Some people don't like to even put peacock feathers on Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sometimes they say that oh Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he shouldn't get. They shouldn't put the peacock feather on him. But not. Not Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mood, but we do usually put many places. They do put peacock feathers on Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but some people say you shouldn't. They say, but as for Lord Balaram, I don't know. We never hear. Oh, there is one pastime, isn't there, where? Krishna, where Balaram dresses up as Krishna, it's mentioned in one, some scripture, not Prabhupada's books, but there's one other book, some other books. It said that one day, Lord Balaram dressed up as Krishna, and he put on a peacock feather and took the flute, and he went into the forest, and he got attacked by Keshi. Keshi kicked him. Keshi demon came running and kicked Balaram, kicked him far. Lord Balaram came back and said, I'm never going to be Krishna again. <laughs> but of course, it's a little unusual pastime because Lord Balaram is equally as powerful as Lord Krishna. As Lord Krishna killed the Keshi demon, Lord Balaram could have also killed the Keshi. But... but Somehow that pastime is there too. Okay, Hare Krishna, Sri Balaram, Mahotsava Ki Jai.
రోజు కానీ షో శ్రీల ప్రభాత్ శ్రీల ప్రభాత్ కి జాయ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ ప్రభుజీ అండ్ ఐ థింక్ ఆల్ట్రైస్ కట్ అండ్ సపోర్ట్ రేషన్ అటివర్డీస్ నవ్వు వీళ్ళు ఎంత క్లాస్ విత్ వైష్ణవ్ రణమ్మ వంచాకల్ప తరుపు 